the 2016 Bassmaster Elite Series season served as a sharp yes. reminder of the power yes. of its veterans. He was the one that came Ricky Clyde gets it done! KBD gets it done with win at number 21! 12 pounds, 10 ounces! KBD doubles down with his second win of the season. The G-Man becoming a two-time Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year! The beginning of the 2017 season brings with it a new wave of anglers. This group of rookies and newcomers may be the stoutest in the history of tournament fishing. Your 2014 Bass Fest champion, Jacob Wheeler! Jesse Wiggins, our champion of the Bass Pro Shops, Bassmaster Southern Open. Jesse Wiggins, our champion. Back to back years, wins himself a Bass Pro Shops, Bassmaster Southern Open. This year, the season starts early. Two events before the Classic, beginning with Chile, Cherokee Lake in East Tennessee, setting up for the first big test of the year. Well, the Bassmaster Elite Series season getting started before the World Championship, before the Geico Bassmaster Classic, and we are here in a place for the first time, these Elite Series anglers are visiting Cherokee Lake in East Tennessee. Holston River, which forms the Tennessee River, and day one didn't take long for the fireworks to get started. Cliff Crochet may be an unlikely pick from South Louisiana to come up here to an upland reservoir in the dead of winter, but look at what he did on day number one. 19 pounds and seven ounces, Cliff Crochet taking over the first lead on the first day of the season. Day two, the attention would shift to another angler, a rookie, Jesse Wiggins from Cullman, Alabama, who qualified through the Bass Pro Shops Bass Master Open. Very solid day number one, and on day number two, he goes right to the exact same spot and begins work again. There he is. Oh, it's big. It's big. I'm gonna come back here and we even land it. God, he's going crazy. Oh, he's barely hooked. No, 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 no. Got him. <sighs> Gagging on that little fluke this morning. Yeah, it's just, man, I just, mm, I just keep wanting to figure out if I'm, I just don't know for sure if I'm lucky or what. I don't know, but God, I keep telling everybody at home, I want, this is not normal. Like, you know, winning that tournament in Florida and then doing decent here, it's just like, it ain't normal. It, don't, it ain't supposed yeah. to happen like that. But my name is actually going to be on the daggum screen. And like, just thinking about it, like, crazy. But I still got one plan, and it's to catch them. That's the, I, I, don't, I'm, I mean, I love being part of it, but I still want to catch them more than anybody. I can promise you. Oh, good gracious. That's a good one right there, boys. Boom! Hey, hey! 16 pounds, 14 ounces. Jesse Wiggins is your brand new leader. Well, Jesse Wiggins, I won't say making it look easy, but certainly getting his work done quickly and efficiently two days in a row. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Welcome to our coverage here. Tommy Sanders and Mark Zona. And Z, it's time for our Skeeter Boats Taste the Bait. And I think we can cover what Jesse's doing and 90% of the rest of the field with one look at one bait. I think it's fair to say that we have not covered a tournament that has been this dominated with one specific technique. A lot of the locals call it a Demiki rig, named after a small, soft plastic. But here's all it is. It is a lead head with a small shad-like trailer. Very small trailer, two to three inches long. But really the beauty is gonna be in that lead head and the line tie. It's a very realistic lead head, about three eighths ounce. But that 90 degree line tie is the key. The reason why, it will let that bait sit horizontal about a foot off the bottom, okay? If we were looking at about a 60 degree line tie, well, that bait's gonna kinda just lay there limp like that. You really want it to stick straight out. And if you watch these guys, they'll drop it down very, very subtle, and it'll just be a pressure bite. And Tommy Sanders, 
I swear to you, friend, there are some walleye fishermen at <laughs> yeah. home watching this saying, no, this is not groundbreaking. That's been around for 397 years. Somebody on the Fox River said, that's my bait right there. That's, yeah, I, I'm, that, I work and my every grandpa's weekend. bait. <laughs> okay, that's our Skeeter Boat Taste of Bait for today. Back with day number three when we return. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite at Cherokee Lake, brought to you by Toyota. Berkeley. Yamaha. And by Skeeter Boats. Early start for the Bassmaster Elite Series this season of 2017. You can tell by the look of the light there, it's a little bit slanted. It is winter time. We're at Cherokee Lake, not too far from the fantastic Knoxville, Tennessee, on this uh, Holston River, which eventually becomes the Tennessee River. Starting day number three, Jesse Wiggins, the rookie, with the lead. Got two other newcomers right behind him, Jamie Hartman and Jacob Wheeler. And as we look at the route of Jesse Wiggins, absolutely no one is surprised. He is headed to the exact same spot. He has started day one and two. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so far, so far, it's not broke. It's a party. God, I hope I can't it's stop. It's already got a drone. It's, it's going to be embarrassing if I don't get a bite. Just, I see fish already right there on the drop. I see them on the depth finder and I just drop down to them. Um, and they've been biting fairly decent in the morning, so hoping to get one, kind of get the party started. I'm coming back there again. It's a big, big in the thing. Oh, baby. What we need. The ditch or the pocket I'm in feels feels at home. I'm just I'm not getting to throw a shaky head. I'm actually throwing that little fluke style thing, and uh, that's the only thing. And I'm just in the middle of the pocket like I would be at home, yeah. but it's just a different different bait. It's like a big pocket, but it's got a depression in it, and that, the shad get in the bottom of the depression, and the bass just swim around in there. I think Boom, like I'll be sitting there, and then there'll be one show up on my depth finder. So yeah. I think they're just swimming around in that depression, and that's what's keeping the shad there. Yeah. Jesse Wiggins, as he did on one and two, those days getting his work done very quickly. Jacob Wheeler starting this day in second place and now having to deal with the distractions of mechanical problems. His day on the water until this point hasn't been all that bad. Actually, Jacob Wheeler on his way to a good solid limit, working effectively on a place he has scouted very thoroughly. But Jacob Wheeler now is gonna face some trouble getting that fifth fish in the boat. Ooh, yeah. I'm trying to literally call a couple people in the cut to bash rules. You can fish with another competitor to end your day. So I'm trying to figure out if I can get a hold of somebody to go and jump in the boat with them and fish. And go to some juice. Gosh, ain't that a solo again? Let me call Connell. Oh, the old phrase, do not adjust your set. This, yep, this is actually happening right here. Jacob Wheeler throwing in with Dustin Connell, and now he's fishing with him out there. Jacob Wheeler with electrical problems in the boat, and yeah, he's within his right to do that. Actually, as we welcome you to the Shell Rotella Bassmaster Garage, let's, well, it might be helpful to actually take a look at that rule right there, which allows him to do exactly that. I'll read it to you in breakdown situations. And with the marshal's permission, anglers may transfer their fish to another competitor's boat or a tournament official designated rescue boat and ride to check in. They may leave their marshals with the disabled boat. In such cases, anglers must stay with their catches at all times if time allows. Here you go. Two elite anglers riding together may fish until check-in. Two anglers may fish. That's allowing these guys to fish on the front deck of the boat? Well, I don't know about the front deck, but that's certainly a rule a lot of people didn't know about. But Tommy, I've had that happen to me before. Somebody picked me up. I was forever indebted to them. I ended up winning the tournament. So I owed them for the rest of my career. But it's something that I think is it's a good rule. And 
it saves a lot of people. It's, it's been used more than most people think, but I've never seen somebody go to the front of the deck, start dropping down under the trolling motor, using the graph, that sort of thing. Unprecedented. Well, I would refer you back to the rules. Nothing says that you can't do that. So I guess that's a knowledge of the rules and a willingness to do everything the rules will allow. Absolutely. Well, let's get back out now and see if Jacob Wheeler can pick up the fish he needs. Got it. Mm. Dang big indeed. Mm. Jacob Wheeler finishing out that limit in good shape right there. 17 pounds and one ounce on the third day of competition. He's positioned very well. How about a true rookie, Jamie Hartman from the state of New York. A fantastic tournament here, 17-9 on day number three to make the top 12. And Jesse Wiggins just, just keeps punching them along there, doing exactly what he's doing all three days. He's got himself at the top of this leaderboard. One more day of fishing left to go there on Cherokee Lake. You just go down the road a piece from Knoxville, Tennessee, up in the mountains to this upland reservoir. And now 12 people are left in the field here. One of them will hoist the trophy at the end of the day. Day four, you know, sitting just about a pound and some change back, pound three to be exact. Um, you know, I, I feel good. I mean, there's definitely an opportunity. I definitely have to have a really good bag. I've been catching consistently that 17, six, high 16s and 17 and a half pounds every day. And today's gonna have to be my best day yet. Well, everyone's hoping for that result on this final day. Again, 12 anglers going after it. Wiggins on top, followed by Hartman and Wheeler. And there he is, Jesse Wiggins right there. And for all his great work this week, still just a 13 ounce lead over Jamie Hartman, Jacob Wheeler not too far behind either, Seth Fighter, Josh Bertrand, all what you might consider young guns populating the top five spots on this leaderboard. But everyone sort of holding their breath, everyone who's gathered out there to watch this young guy. He's really captured everyone's attention in this tournament, holding their breath to see if this place will pay off for one day more. First day I pulled in there and I really didn't know what to expect. And then the first drop of my Elite Series career was a three pounder. And I thought, well, this spot may be really good. And I just kept in there and, you know, it happened real quick all three days. When I see the shad, I feel like the bass should be in there. And then usually within a few seconds, the bass starts showing up in the morning time. It's a good one. Yeah! Exactly the result he wanted to start this fourth and final day here on Cherokee Lake and Jesse Wiggins extending that 13 ounce lead that he started the day with. Let's go on up the lake, not too far to another rookie, Jamie Hartman, the New Yorker from the Syracuse, Lake Oneida area, and obviously someone who's very, very comfortable with this technique being utilized by so many in the field. I have two rods on my deck and I run three different colors and it's all uh, the Namiki Armor Shad. It's, it's constantly figuring them out through the day. I can drop a color on a fish and he just won't touch it. He'll keep coming up on the bait and coming up on the bait and I'll reel it up and grab a different color and I'll drop it down and just boom, smokes it. So I don't know what it is, if it's, it's just their mood, it's, it's a different fish. You know, they're just looking for something that's, they've seen them hundreds and hundreds of times you know it's a big thing down here but it's always to get to this position it's it's figuring something out here he comes we got it mm. Mm. don't do it bud don't do it Stay down, stay down, stay down. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Yes. <sighs> Simple color change on the same fish. I got back on that same fish, just changed the color. That's all it took. Whew, that's a good one. Number two. Jamie Hartman, who had fallen a little bit further behind, catching one of those nice big Tennessee smallmouth. Maybe make up a little bit of ground on Jesse Wiggins. Meanwhile, Jacob Wheeler, starting this day in third place, at least so far on day number four, has zero keepers in his live well. I 
do the thing. Man. Yeah! Good start right there. Dang big and right there. That's a good three and some change. Woo! We need him like that. Look how chunky that one is. Well, it took a little while, but that's a good start for the fourth and final day for Jacob Wheeler. Trying to come up from third place. He'll need about four more like that if he wants to contend for the 100 grand. The Bassmaster Elite Series starting off the year 2017 with two regular season events before the classic. This one here at Cherokee Lake, stop number one. First time ever at Cherokee Lake and all these guys happy to volunteer at least on days number three and four for a trip to fabulous Knoxville, Tennessee. Great town, great place to visit and a great place to host a tournament back out to the water. Second place to start this day, Jamie Hartman. Yep. Jamie Hartman and another good one. Jamie Hartman with a decent, really a better than decent, a fantastic limit in the boat for the final day. And meanwhile, Jesse Wiggins, things have not been going as they've gone the first three days of this tournament. Been much, much slower, yeah! way far behind schedule on this day, and it's enough to cause yeah. some concern. He's gonna have to pick up the pace yeah! because now he's fallen into third place. Thank you. That's a big one. Ah, uh, all about five. Eight to four, though. <laughs> That's a good boy. Oh my gosh! Please, baby. Oh, baby. I got her hooked good. Oh, it's the biggest one of the tournament. <laughs> I don't even know what to do right now. I'm gonna try. That's for you, Mama. How about that right there, now? Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Number five, and it is the biggest one yet. Four pounder. That's for you, Mama. Thank you. How about that? A rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the final day, and he catches his biggest fish of the tournament. Now he's into the size he needs to get back on top, but he's going to still have to hold off some pretty tough customers, including this man, Jacob Wheeler. Such mastery over Cherokee Lake all three days, and now he tells us he's on the spot where he feels he feels the tournament could be won. You know, this morning was really slow. I mean, I caught one fish. It was about a three and a half pounder. Yeah. It was a really nice fish, but. Um, you know, I, I, did, I wasn't catching a lot of fish, you know, and so I went back to an area that I, I caught fish this week. I got down, we're down imaging, and, and what down imaging does, well, over 2D, down imaging, you see the fish inside the rocks, and that's the key when you're out there on Cherokee, these fish live inside the rocks. So I was literally down imaging, I have a down imaging picture, and I'm graphing around, I'm graphing around this hole, and I see these fish, and I knew for a fact I had them in smallmouth, and I turned around, and I'm like, dude, let's catch them. You know, I'm gonna, it, 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 this is gonna be awesome. Better one right here. He ate it like he wanted to. Boom! Yes! Yes! Woo! That's a dang good one right there, boys. We are on a mega bag right here, boys. We are on a mega bag of them. Them suckers are in there like thick as thieves. I dropped down on my first drop, seven or ten of them come up. Doom, zzz, hook them, and it's like 30 of them come up off the graph. The Lorenz electronics are going crazy. Here we go, here we go. Another big one. Yes! 
I'm reeling that fish around. I get back there, throw him in the live well, drop back down. I mean, like, guys are like, hey, hey, show, show him for the picture. I'm like, no, I haven't got time. I'm literally, I throw him in the live well, drop back down, catch another one, put it the next one in the live well, drop back down, catch another one. It was every drop for, for about 15 minutes. I mean, it wasn't seven, seven drops, it was probably 20 drops. I got it, I caught one. Ready, watch him. Oh! It's okay. Freaking hundred of them there. Dude, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. This is the kind of stuff you gotta have happen. That's the dang for. Okay, we gotta dang start weighing them. Figure out what's up. And just like that, Jacob Wheeler looks for all the world like he may be in the driver's seat. This could be his biggest limit of the entire tournament. If that is true, he'll hold the trophy. Let's take it all the way down to Knoxville, Tennessee, not far away. A rare opportunity for an indoor weigh-in on a regular Bassmaster Elite Series event. Good crowd on hand in bass fishing country. The state of Tennessee, Dave Mercer, ready to get it going. From Indianapolis, Indiana, get loud for Jacob Wheeler. He's looking for 14-4 to take the lead. Five fish all alive, 18 pounds, three ounces. With 69 pounds, 13 ounces. Knoxville, let me hear you. Let's roll through our next angler. Get loud, ladies and gentlemen, for Elite Series rookie, Jamie Hartman. He's have a big day to catch Wheeler, looking for 17 pounds, 14 ounces. 17 pounds, three ounces. 17, three. Ladies and gentlemen, his first ever Elite Series event. Let's hear it for Jamie Hartman. This is no normal rookie, ladies and gentlemen. He's a two-time Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Open Champion. He is the one and only Jesse Wiggins. Boom shakalaka, giant bass. It's either Wiggins or Wheeler. Looking for 17 pounds and an ounce. 16 pounds, three ounces. 16 pounds, three ounces, and with that, Jacob Wheeler bats a thousand. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Ten years ago, or eight years ago, I was just watching these guys on, online, watching them on, on ESPN, and I, I'm just sitting here thinking about what all's gone on and what all's gone on this week. I mean, for this to, to unfold like it has, I mean, it's unbelievable. You already have one of these trophies. You got room for another one? <laughs> yeah, I definitely got room for this one for sure. All right, let's make this official to do the handoff. We're gonna bring out our tournament director, Trip Weldon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we started with 110, cut it down to 51. Now there is just one, your champion, the 2017 Cherokee Lake Bassmaster Elite Series champion, Jacob Wheeler. Kicking the season off with a win, there is nothing like it. And Dave Mercer put it best. This guy, Jacob Wheeler, is batting a thousand against these Bassmaster Elite Series anglers. We'll take it down to Lake Okeechobee for stop two. The ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is brought to you by Mercury. Nitro Boats. Humminbird. And by Shell Rotella. 
Hey, we're on our way, 2017. We're, we're on a roll now. Our first event's in the books from Cherokee Lake, and now we move on to a very familiar place for all bass fishing aficionados. Welcome back to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Tommy Sanders, Mark Zona, Lake Okeechobee. It's a great year-round fishery, but this time of year, when we're hitting it right now, it seems to be really at its best. Uh, there's no doubt about it, Tommy Sanders, but the Big O is still the Big O, and the places where you really want to concentrate on this lake well, year in, year out, you look at the South Shore, the West Shore, and the North Shore. One of the reasons why you want to get yourself out of the wind and find clean, stable, now hold on, you want to find warming water. Absolutely. Okay? And the other side of this is, if you really looked at the footage of Lake Okeechobee, the last time we were there, whether it was Chris Lane or this guy right here, if you look at Ish Monroe and what he did, Everything looks the same. Everything looks the same. And you have to constantly, every time we're there, you have to cover water and cover water, not to just find one giant bass like this. You want to find a wave of giant fish. These, these huge bass travel in massive packs. And as you, you look at all this vegetation, you say to yourself, well, it all looks the same. But if you find that key magic, maybe it's a three, to five acre area. Well, look at that tournament a couple years ago. You don't find one giant bass, Tommy. You can find dozens of bass just like this. Yeah, that's the total focus of our Yamaha Unlock the Lake. That performance in 2012, Ish Monroe got off to a blazing start, almost went back and lost that lead and came back with 30 pounds plus on the final day. Look at that, a memorable, memorable event. Two things, warming water, clean water, Lake Okeechobee. It is the year of Ishama! Ish Monroe, another big win, another century belt added to his collection, the Big Bass Specialist. That's how you get a name like that. That was what happened in 2012. Let's fast forward to day one, 2017. Odd Defoe with a limit that would fit right in there near the top. The last time we were here, back five years ago, 31 pounds plus to take that lead on day number one. And Odd Defoe, we started well this season. He's a native of the Knoxville area, and he did very, very well at Cherokee Lake. So that puts Adifo on top of the points position, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. But again, it's early on. It's just a slight lead against the likes of Paul Mueller and David Mullins. So he takes the lead into day number two, but on day number two, attention would shift to a veteran this man right here, Timmy Horton, who has won big time in Florida before and has a reputation as a great closer. He's still on there. That's the way you start a morning. Clone cross him. Man, I set the hook and he came. He came uh, 10 feet to the side of that reed and I'm sitting there fighting him. We had us a train wreck, but we got it. Got it, Nate? Lake Okeechobee's Yankee Stadium of Bass Fishing Lakes and there's not many places you go, you get a chance to catch 100 pounds, and, and those 25 pound days to be able to do it day after day is, is, uh, is not easy, but not, there's not many lakes you can do it like you can here at Lake Okeechobee. You know, what we gotta do today is execute. You know, yesterday was flawless, those big fish bit, I think I only lost one of them. Um, and get those fish to the boat, it's not easy. This is some really thick cover, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a train wreck till you get them to the boat, but it makes it really tough. with 56 pounds, three ounces. Timmy 
Horton is leading this whole thing. Oh, well, thank you. Watching someone put together a limit like this, 30 pounds plus, is a rare and wonderful thing. And Timmy Horton will get to continue his journey on Okeechobee when we continue. The ARE Truck Caps Bass Master Elite second event for 2017 at legendary Lake Okeechobee. I think Timmy Horton called it the Yankee Stadium of bass fishing. That's a great way to put it. So much tradition here and so many amazing eye-popping results through the years. And this time around, a lot more of the big names near the top than we had at the first event of this season. They're all chasing one guy, Timmy Horton. I don't know that we can repeat what we did yesterday. That's a special day when you're when you're culling a five pounder. And, uh, but man, anything over 20 is I'm gonna feel good about. If we get over 25, we're gonna feel real good. But uh, you can't let up here. I mean, guys can come in with 37 to 42 pounds, and, and you can come in with 25, and they're right back in it. So just gonna stay focused and stay at it. Biggest one I've caught. <clears throat> There's a nine. Shake it off. Oh, that was a giant. Hey, you know, uh, it was probably a little green when I tried to land it, but once you get a, get their heads up and all of them reeds, you got to keep it up. Uh, if I'd have been in open water, I'd have let that fish just go and wear down, but you can't let them get their head back down. They'll get you lodged up in those reeds. So once I got his head up, um, I'm bringing him to the boat. He must have been hooked in some fleshy area and, and, and not a good hookup, but he just popped free. <laughs> Talk about days like yesterday. <laughs> Land all of them is rare. But today is bad in the opposite direction. Four or five pounder. Timmy Horton, after a day number two that was a truly magical day, a career day, you might even say, when everything that could go right went right, having the opposite happening on day number three. Starting the day in fifth place, Arkansas's Stephen Browning going against the conventional wisdom, the flipping stick and the big jig, trying to make something happen with lighter tackle here on Okeechobee. Mm, that may be, maybe, yeah. <clears throat> Get up here. Watch you, watch your jump. Oh yeah, come up here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> oh my, huh? How about that? Oh my, that's a big one. Just kind of right there. Punched me a ticket to fish on a Sunday right there, man. Holy cow. Jiminy Cricket. Come on, man. Oh, he said, hold it up. Yeah, buddy's right. I don't like we're gonna pull a cool tag in that one. Give me some knuckle by my cameraman. Golly bum, that was huge, man. I mean, huge. One huge bass from Okeechobee turning the whole day around from Stephen Browning. His uh, prediction of making the top 12 looks pretty safe at this point. Also, it's not been everything it could be for Floridian Cliff Prince. He's near to the time when he has to head back 
Could weigh in, but he's got one more cast left to go in this day. I'm talking about. Talking about in the last minute, son. Come on with that. Look at that coal hammer. Cliff Prince in the last minute heroics. Put that one in the box and head back to the weigh-in. So we take it back out to Timmy Horton. A similar story for him today. So many things have gone wrong, and he's got less than half of the weight he had on day number two. A little last minute heroics would help him as well. There we go. Stay hooked. Stay hooked. Yes. Oh, goodness. That gives you a chance tomorrow, right there. Compared to days one and two, today number three has been ugly. No other way to put it for Tim Horton, but he salvaged something very important at the end. What about the size he's become used to here on Okeechobee? Let's take a look at who he'll join in the top 12, including Dean Rojas, a fantastic tournament here. 58 pounds and two ounces, 15 pounds and an ounce on day number three. Stephen Browning, you saw him catch that big one there to keep his spot in the top 12, 17 pounds and four ounces on day three for Stephen Browning. Greg Hackney scaring everyone moving into the top four, 21 pounds and seven ounces, a big, big bag on day number three for the hack attack. Cliff Prince, last minute heroics count for something, that's for sure. Counts for putting him into third place. Cliff Prince winding up with 19 pounds and 11 ounces. Ott Defoe, the day one leader, doing his best to hang in there, keep within closing distance of Timmy Horton, but only 14 pounds and 14 ounces. He'll have the better part of eight pounds to make up. 15 pounds, 11 ounces, Tim Horton back in the lead. Oh, Lake Okeechobee. Okeechobee gives and Okeechobee can take away, and Timmy Horton has experienced both extremes in the course of two days. And here he sits, though, remaining in that lead with an eight pound lead. As a matter of fact, we know how precarious that can be. What should be his plan? Yeah. Thank goodness he caught that last fish late in the day today to actually increase his lead. He's got a big lead for elite tournament. Not many times you go in eight pounds up, but tomorrow the wind's supposed to blow 20 miles an hour out of north. It's gonna change Lake Okeechobee for sure. Every bite will count. He needs to put his head down. It might not take but 10, 12, 15 pounds, but every bite will count tomorrow. Well, there are our 12, down to 12 for the final day. And among the top 12, the top 16, Rojas, who we saw today, Stephen Browning, ditto. Greg Hackney moving up in there. That's of concern to all these guys, or should be. Cliff Prince hanging in there. Ott Vifo, our day one leader. And there you see, right on top, eight pound lead, Tim Horton. The ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite at Lake Okeechobee is brought to you by Powerful, Minn Kota, Triton Boats. And by Hook. Final day, championship day on Lake Okeechobee. ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite. Second stop of the year for the greatest fishermen in the world. Twelve of them are left out here today. 
in this legendary fishery, Lake Okeechobee. It's been sport fishing for bass that here maybe longer than any place else in the country, but Lake Okeechobee is known for changes that can really affect the bite and your ability to get to those bass. As these 12 anglers go out today, they look around them, they see weather that is changing and most importantly, wind that is changing. And Tim Horton knows that a seven and a half pound lead is not safe. 35 pounds can happen here in a heartbeat. Ironically, and it can happen in conditions like today because it'll push fish out of the lake that people didn't find uh, that were maybe already staged up in some of the water further out and it'll push them in some clean water when people try to get out of it. So that had me a little nervous and I was too stubborn. I went down this there this morning I was determined I was going to make it work and actually didn't even start fishing until 1030. Just ran around, couldn't find clean water and uh, ran back up here and got settled down and I thought, you know what? If I can catch 10 to 12 pounds, they, they'll have, the couple of guys right behind me will have to have 20. That gives me a chance. Oh, that's a good one. That's not a bass. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. All right. And he looked like a pickerel down there. We got to keep catching these is what we got to do. Nose. Tim Horton started the day with a long run to get to the place that had paid so handsomely. On days one and two, that place was trashed. He had to move to a completely different spot, and now finally he gets himself on the board. Trying to hang on to that lead, Greg Hackney starts this day more than nine pounds back. Needs a meaningful final day push. Oh, there's a bunch of them out here, and I hadn't really, I fished for them a little bit on day two and caught a bunch, and I just, yesterday I never even fished any of this. I fished real slow and thorough because there was no wind and I just didn't have time to fish it all, you know. And of course today, I'm fishing a lot faster just because I can't help it, you know. But I wouldn't plan on staying in here all day, but I, I thought I, it, if I could leave here with one big one, you know, because I knew I couldn't catch 30 pounds in here, but I thought I might catch the starting of it. And you know, I'm a dreamer, so I'm like, maybe I can just catch one. One 10 pounder. Don't come off. There for a second, I was like, man, maybe I just talked me one right into it. That's about the kind of fish I've been, you know, catching out here, but. Not a bad one for Greg Hackney right there, but he talked about those 10 pounders just a moment ago, a 10 pounder certainly might be part of one of the components anyway to what he needs in order to catch this man, Tim Horton. Tim Horton grinding one out today, still looking for a limit. Number five. Number five. Limit for Tim Horton. That is important on this final day, trying to hang on and win this event. Ot Defo, our day one leader, never has really lost confidence, always knows that somewhere out there is the fish that can put him back on top. That's a better one. Stay picked up, baby. <laughs> I ain't never flipped a fish that big before, I don't think. Woo! Look at that. <laughs> I probably have, but dude, that's a big one. That's a big old fish to hit to jerk out of the water. Oh, thank you, Jesus. A terrific ending to the final day for Adifo, who has fought bravely, never falling out of the top three here all week long at Lake Okeechobee as we take you back to Okeechobee City and settle it all with the weigh-in. And that fin freak of nature may be the difference maker, but today the important day. He's got five fish looking for 15 pounds even, 18 pounds, 13 ounces, 18 pounds, and 13 ounces, and once again, Ot Defo is your leader. 82 pounds and an ounce. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. 
from Muscle Shoals, Alabama, get loud for Timmy Horton. Gonna be close, get side by side, guys. Looking for 10 pounds, four ounces. 11 pounds, seven ounces, 11, seven. And Timmy Horton becomes a five-time Bassmaster winner. 11, seven, and Timmy Horton takes his fifth Bassmaster win and another great finish back here in the great state of Florida. Timmy Horton, what a career, but it has been a little while since that last win up at Lake Champlain. A totally different set of circumstances here, and so different from the cold waters of Cherokee Lake where we started the season. Jacob Wheeler again, keeping his record against the Bassmaster Elite Series anglers absolutely perfect. Two big wins to start out 2017. That's our regular season well underway as we look at it now, but the next time we see you, we'll be coming to you from the World Championship of Bass Fishing, the Geico Bass Bassmaster Classic, first time ever in Houston, Texas. First time ever for these elite anglers to visit Lake Conroe. Definitely one you don't want to miss. That's next time. Deuce.